Hello everyone, welcome to another new episode of God is Fire with Charity Aswell. As always, I want to start with a big thank you to all our subscribers and our viewers. Your subscriptions, your shares and comments has been an awesome and no doubt encouraging. God bless you all. On today's episode, we will be having a very special lady in our midst. She's all the way from Aquiron State in Nigeria. Who will be sharing with us how she overcame several odds and carved a, a niche for herself as a Nigerian entrepreneur in logistics. Please welcome with me our guest today, Ms. Mayena Basi Uyayapan, aka the Executive Errand Girl. Hello, depending on the time zone you're watching us from, my name is Mayena Basi Uyayapan. Well, you are welcome today to our Miss Ma'am. Thank you for joining us. Welcome once again. Now let's get right into it. Our first question goes to us. Could you please give us an insight into, into who Menye Nabasi Uyayapan is? Okay, thank you. Menye Nabasi Uyayapan is an entrepreneur. Not just an entrepreneur. The rising cases of Tina illnesses around us gave me the inspiration to go into farm fresh food stores. Most times we are one with it. And most illnesses are caused by what to eat. So I had to go into the internet to source for food stops, vegetables, planted even of chemicals, sourced vegetables from farms, from fish markets, plantains, planted without fertilizers, fish cells, food, homegrown food stops. And most of us are not eating the past 10 to 15 years. So that we can reduce daily consumption of germs and chemically processed foods. That gives the rise for what we call Mukat Mukat, who will run a 100% organic food store. Thank you. Our next question says thus In your own opinion, what would you say are the odd pitched preach, against female gender, that is, women in today's world? They ask me, the girls are pushed against today's woman in entrepreneurship, in administration, and in daily living. The same thing, the woman was appointed to learn about the gene. You go to social media, there were lots of bashing because she's a woman, because of her shape, because of her status quo. When a woman achieves a master in her climb, in Africa, maybe around the world, it is either associated to a man. Rarely do we give credit to women achieving goals out of their hard work. But that doesn't deter me. I rise and I walk beyond the noise because I have a purpose, a clear defined purpose. I have goals, very stated goals that are working towards achieving one step after the other. So, if a purpose driven woman closes her ears from noise, she walks towards achieving her set down goals. You take the one after the other. You don't throw stones at every door of market. We are on a journey. You are focused on the journey. If you start throwing stones at every door of market, you will lose your target. You will miss your target, the target on your goals. That's the impact of this. Our focus. By the time we are focused and we are working towards our goals, step after step, it may not be speedy, one step at a time. Thank you. The next question goes to us. In this light, and from your own perspective, what are the challenges female entrepreneurs face given both Nigeria and eco uh, global economy? Our present economy in this time is not free. Not just restricted to the female gender. 
the male gender as well, are also complaining. The followers, female is a pregnant. We are striving to make it. There's this gender stereotypic goal that you go out to look for loans, resource for grants, or even ask for relatives or friends to go with you. Some may want to get you there. Some may blatantly refuse to help you or even recommend you because you're a woman. And we live in a male dominated society. So it's really hard for us striving to achieve goals in this present economy. But once you're focused, for me as a person, I prefer my baby steps one step at a time in order to achieve my goal. Nothing drives me back. I strive towards achieving my goal little by little. Thank you. Our next question says, what led you to breaking out of the stereotypical gender role of women solely being homemakers, especially considering the native African society you belong to? Well, these gender stereotypic roles in African society, especially in my country and my state where I reside, I reside has no hold on me. Especially if you come from a family that is female dominated, you know that whatever the male cousin of yours, the male relative of yours is achieving, is striving to achieve, you two should walk towards it. This is not comparison. You have to walk towards your goal, you walk towards what you are looking for. Like I said earlier, a clearly defined and stated goal has nothing to do with gender. Mr. A, you want to achieve this in five years. Mr. B, you want to achieve this in two years. So this has not to do, nothing to do with your gender. I, as a woman, I have my dreams, I have my goals. May not be where I want to be yet, but certainly I'm not where I used to be years ago. So here in Akla, we are we striving towards breaking the genes of women, not achieving certain positions, not achieving certain milestones, not owning certain properties. No, we are breaking the genes gradually. Those generational genes, we are breaking it gradually. Thank you. On to the next questions. What were your challenges? What were the challenges you encounter on your journey to financial freedom and economic power. Hey, I face several challenges while trying to achieve economic freedom. Number one, we have faith from staff. Work last moving into your shop while you're home. Lots of products are good on transit and then demorages and lots more. You get credit for you're going to for credit facilities that you may never be given. So you are given with the interest rates is straight cutting. But when you can't find capital from anywhere, they have no choice than to get credit facilities from some microfinance houses to build your business. And then you try to see how to pay back to stand on your own while trying to create this financial freedom. And then the economic situation is not helping us. Our profit margin is really, really small. When you go just in a normal balance or in the street balance, when we hear who give up and you lose, we don't feel give up. This journey we are pressing on to the goal. And the goal is financial freedom. It's hard and it's hard to be dependent, solely dependent on anybody. So they ask for them to pay. Maybe everybody feed one more. Thank you. Last but not the least questions. What word of encouragement or inspiration do you have for people out there? Particularly women who have hit rock bottom, but also want to bust out beautifully like you did. From the concon of the rap societal prospection about women in business. My advice is always this. When you fall, strive to rise again. When you lose hope in the next person to get beside you, hold the stone beside you, struggle to stand up. You don't fall and you run in your fall. 
we will die there. Most of us have hit our rock bottoms a few years down the line. When you just like the common parlance has said, when life throws you no man, leave the lemon and make it the money. Turn it into the money. As we parlance say, they say the breakfast. For me, I say, the breakfast when they say me, I don't chop a man, I carry myself without the new ticket. Let that was sink inside you. There is nothing as sweet as a woman with a little money of her own. No matter how small it is. Get out there. You so look for something and do. Go worry for your relatives, even if it means hopping such water. Go sell their nuts. The profit margin is encouraging. Look for something and do. And every day, if you have 500 naira returns every day, profit, calculate it by 80 days, it gives you 15,000 naira in a month. You have 1,000 naira daily return of the returns, gives you 30,000 naira in a month. 2,000 naira gives you 60,000 naira in a month. No, nothing is little in this present economy. Get up and do something. Get up and there's, no, there's nothing as satisfying as daily income. There's nothing as satisfying as turning around and seeing that you can pay one or two bills of your own without being solely dependent. A solely dependent woman is a liability. And today's economy, we don't work on liability. We are grooming a circle and a class of women who are value added women. If this one brings in a million naira from her office, this one brings in a hundred thousand naira from her shop, this one brings in ten thousand naira, and this one brings in one thousand naira, we all bring in value depending on our own classes. Life is in stages, men are in sizes. Our fingers are not only four, five of it, as you can see, they are in different sizes. So every woman out there gets to do something. No matter how small it is, you always be proud of yourself. That's why, that's why I'm learning what to any woman around me. I keep preaching this in the market square, in church, in schools, wherever I have the opportunity to talk to women, to talk to young girls, get up and do something. Go learn a skill, go learn a trick. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, man. It's been a very interesting and enlightening speaking with you. Thank you once again. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. Dear viewers, especially my wonderful ladies out there, I believe you've been encouraged, inspired, and motivated. Now I urge you to go ahead and defy all odds and norms. Do not let your situation define you. Choose and start today to be who you are meant to be and be more for yourself. Thank you for watching, liking, and sharing. Please subscribe if you are new here and click the bell button icon for notification. Also feel free to leave your comments below and questions. Till next time, stay inspired. God bless.